they're going to profile at Sushi Onita and FMW, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, and the the exploding rings and et cetera, et cetera. But we probably, hopefully, I haven't seen the finished product, but we're going to get a look at Onita from how this was formulated and how he came up with these ideas and got started and et cetera in in uh, thinking that. And I know that I furnished them some classic old pictures of Onita from when he was here in, in this country in the early 80s and the footage of the Tupelo concession stand brawl that he and Masafuchi did with Eddie Gilbert and Riggy Morton that that probably inadvertently <laughs> is responsible for deathmatch garbage wrestling today. Uh, so that'll be interesting whether they have time to get that in or not. That'll be the first time that's been seen on, well, ever on national television and first time on anybody's television in 40 years. It was 1981. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, Onita is a, a crazy fucking figure in wrestling. And while I disagreed with doing the, you know, the bank addicted drug robber, because that's just such, you know, such a fringe thing. And it just gives people a skewed impression of what professional wrestling is. Onita drew money in Japan. Onita was over. Onita got elected to public office because of this tomfoolery. And he, he got a lot of attention. So this is something that, you know, if you're going to cover it, at least cover the most successful example of this genre, and that would be FM. There's never been another death match or hardcore promotion that did anywhere near this kind of business or Onita's kind of business. Has there anywhere in the world ever? No, and you'll know Dark Side's in trouble when they do an episode on Wing. Remember that? <laughs> what was that, Mickey Ibaragi? Yeah. Yeah, that was like an offshoot outlaw mud show of the offshoot outlaw mud show, right? I mean, it, it, they would take fringe people from the states and and bring them over for seven hundred bucks a week or whatever, and put them in horror movie outfits. And, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, Leatherface with a chainsaw and Freddy Krueger and all this other shit, and and that's why a lot of guys that said. Yeah, I used to get to go to Japan back in the 90s. Well, that's the kind of thing they were doing. They were going over there and actually probably coming out of their pocket just to say they got tours of Japan to go work for the outlaws. That's that's another thing, honestly, that Onita brought to Japan pretty much was the popularization of independent outlaw wrestling in Japan, which, you know, combined with Anoki getting older and losing his mind and... Baba getting sick and dying pretty much finished off Japan as being the, I guess the, the, I don't want to say that there's still major league wrestling in Japan, obviously, but there was only in Japan, major league wrestling for so many years. There weren't any outlaws. There weren't any independent groups. There was just Baba and Anoki and they saw the best in the world from everywhere. Onita is, you know, after the, <clears throat> I know the first shoot offs were the shoot groups and, and, you know, Maeda and whatever the yeah, fuck. That's what, but, that's what I think really hurt Japan is when pride took over. Cause then there was no turning back. Well, but at the same time, it was still a big budget operation. They didn't have the little bitty rinky dink outlaw groups and mud shows and garbage death matches and things until. Onita made big money with it, and then everybody tried to copy it. And then, as I said, Anoki went crazy, and Baba died, and then every kind of group in the world sprang up. Remember, they that's where Leno tried to get me booked in Japan to to book the the lucha promotion that we're sending the Mexican guys to Japan. Universal, yeah, and because everything in Japan when it started splintering off worked at the start because. People that liked New Japan and Anoki, they had seen the best luchadors from Mexico because of the relationship they had, and Tiger Mask had gone there, and blah, blah, blah. But then a promotion comes in just bringing every fucking luchador, 
And the violent matches for Baba with Sheik and Abdullah the Butcher and the blood and the objects and everything, that had gotten over on the cards with normal wrestling. So then all of a sudden there's a promotion where all you got is garbage, blood, violence, death promotion. And then, you know, basically you you dilute the talent and you use guys that wouldn't have been able to 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 get Japanese tours when there were only two major promotions because they weren't good enough. And then you have promotions just going overboard on every style of wrestling that used to be a part of the big promotions, but not they didn't run away with it. And pre and everything then was fragmented into little pieces, and everybody's drawing six hundred people. And I th I think that's. Onita did huge business, but it didn't do any good for the fucking wrestling business in Japan. One of many things that didn't do good for the wrestling business in Japan. I don't know. I mean, argue with me if you want to. I think it's a combination of things, but I think what you bring up is important because it changed a lot of that, even though he had success. But also you started to see some people get involved with wrestling over there that would never have been able to get in with Baba or Noki. And I think, again, that happening... At the same time, Baba dies, and then all Japan completely blows up, and you have the formation of Noah. At the same time, Anoki begins to start doing interesting things is when pride takes over. Doing interesting things? That's like when Grandpa walks around with his tallywhacker hanging out in the backyard because he can't remember where he's at. He's doing interesting things. And pride, I think the success of pride, and you could trace it all back to, you know, you could trace it back to whatever you want. You could trace it back to Ali and Anoki, but really, Maeda forming a strong third that was big because the first one failed outside of Tokyo in 88, right. the success of the UWF. And then all of a sudden, all the shoot groups, pro wrestling Fujiwara Gumi and all the different yeah. things that popped up rings. And then by the time you have pride and you're presenting mixed martial arts, like professional wrestling, including featuring professional wrestlers, very often getting their asses kicked. <laughs> I think that changed everything because all of a sudden, People, you know, I'm not saying people over there believed in kayfabe that it was all real, but once you completely yeah. open the door like that, there's no turning back. And it took it a long meant time for New Japan there. to get to where they are now. It meant more there that people had respect for the business as a sport, even if they knew there was an element of work to it. It meant more there than anywhere else. And then when you not only basically run shows where the wrestlers are getting their ass kicked, as you mentioned, and then the the available talent pool shrinks because the territories gave way to just WCW and just WWF. So if you couldn't get those guys, the American talent was lesser and that's who's going. So the people are seeing wrestlers getting their ass kicked when they were supposed to be the toughest ever. You're seeing less talented talent than the cream of the entire wrestling world that they had seen all those years. And people more than ever before know that it's all a work. That's what happened. And then, and now new Japan's doing great business again. Uh, and, and it took them a, a long time it to get took here. Them, what 15 years. Yeah, It took them a while. I mean, I know what you think about Omega, but that's one of the reasons people talk about Omega. Cause when it finally happened, Kenny was there and it took a while to get there. And, you know, unfortunately I'm someone who used to see everything I could out of Japan. There's very little I want to see out of Japan. Cause sometimes you try something and you just think, you just say to yourself, what is this? What is this? Is the purpose to piss on Baba's grave or is the purpose just to be a jerk off? And that's, that's the problem is, is that uh, everybody still talks about, to me, when I see all these people on, uh, especially the AEW fans, the the faithful AEW fans that have been there th since the start and thought it was good even when it was horseshit, they love Japanese wrestling. They they act like Japanese wrestling is what it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. It is not. And if they act in some way like that, that Japan is still this holy ground where the rules are respected and people treat it like a sport and the you know and everything's just sunshine and lollipops rainbows and waterfalls and it's not anymore they have outlaw shit they have goofy american finishes and interference in front of the referee and fucking 
you know, the whole night they've, they've Americanized themselves to every time I to where it's yes. At the top, you know, of new Japan, the Tanahashi's of the world and the Okada's and et cetera, they still have an element of star power to them, but everybody else, it's just like American fucking wrestling. And that's not a, a compliment anymore. So that's no, I, I used to, my God, my eyes would pop out when in 1984, when I got a package with the latest months of, you know, Baba and Anoki's television programs with the biggest stars in the world, having main event matches, but it's not that way anymore. And I, is it that the people think that that it is because they're told that it is or the people think that it is because they never saw Japanese wrestling then to understand why people started saying that what do you think well there's certainly an element that's younger or just hasn't seen the older stuff but there is an element that really believes it that really thinks whatever they're seeing is the best now than it's ever been there is you have to acknowledge that they may be wrong or right but that's what they believe I don't think it's a I don't think there's any pretense. I think it's a genuine belief until AEW and we'll see what happens going forward. But like you said, the talent pool for years was piss poor over there. I mean, I hate to say, but there's a reason why Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson were over there because there wasn't a fucking pool of Stan Hansen's and Steve Williams to pick from. And, yeah. you know, now we'll see what happens going forward. But I think there has been to its detriment an Americanization to Japanese wrestling. And it hasn't been, to me, it doesn't make me want to see a lot of Japanese wrestling. Although there's certainly stuff. I love Ishii, Okada. There's stuff I like, but there's not a lot of stuff I seek out. And is it, I guess, is it just me or do even the new, I'm not saying new Japan. I'm saying the the new, the modern, the current Japan, Japanese stars. You you knew immediately th there was no similarity between Enoki and Fujinami. There was no similarity between Baba and Saruta and Tenor. You they all had their own fucking deal. They worked completely differently. If the much less the American, the foreigners that came in were all different, but the Japanese top stars were all different and had their own styles. And a lot of the guys, the same as over here. They do the same shit these days. And it just, there's no, visually, a lot of them look the same, and, and physically, a lot of them work the same, just like in the United States. I think that's a part of it, too. I hope you're not walking us into reviewing New Japan. <laughs> um, the show, it sounds like it. Well, I'll walk us in a different direction. <laughs> do you think they'll cover when Onita won the big match, I can't remember what it was, and jumped off the bridge into the river to celebrate with all the people cheering and and uh, throwing babies in the air. And then come to find out that that's like the most polluted river in Japan, and he was all cut up from his match and had open wounds and got an infection from jumping in that sewage-infested water and nearly killed him, nearly died, was hospitalized. Yes, I that believe that'll be in part four, or act four. <laughs> That's got to be the, I've never heard of, that is a, the the one and only time that anything like that has ever happened in professional wrestling. And you can't say that about a lot. But nobody else has ever jumped into a sewage infested river with open wounds and gotten a near fatal infection. But please feel free to try. But you know how, you know what would have helped him out? No. If instead of all those sharp <laughs> razor blades that he was using, if instead he had just invested in the performance package 4.0 from our friends at Manscaped, that would have made all the difference. Then he wouldn't have had open wounds. He would have had skin as smooth as a baby's bottom. He would have been nick free and cut free. He would have had no wounds. There would have been no place for all that sewage to enter his body. Unless he opened his mouth, in which case, well, that's a whole nother story. But folks, you don't have to open your mouth and eat a bunch of shit to have smooth, <laughs> slick, genital areas, taints, 
sphincters, oh. and anything else on your body that you want to make slick with the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped. And now, they are shipping worldwide, not only the U.S., but Canada, the U.K., Europe, Australia, South Africa, even Singapore. Inside the Performance Package, folks, you're going to find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, the Performance Boxer Briefs, and even a travel bag. And you can put all that stuff in there along with your balls that'll be so slick and smelling so good. The Lawnmower 4.0 has the advanced skin safe technology, the 7000 RPM motor, multifunction on and off switch. Yes, you can turn this thing on and then you can turn it off. And it's also got a 4000K LED spotlight so that you can get a more precise shave when you're, uh, especially in the dark. Brian, oftentimes when you're laying there in the middle of the night in bed, you think, God damn it, I forgot to shave my nards. And you turn this light on it without bothering your better half on the other side of the bed. You can shave your nuts there. Just here's the thing. In the bed. In the bed. Why would you do that? Well, I was about to say, here's the thing. You end up with a lot of hair in your bed, but yeah. Otherwise than that, you don't cut yourself. <laughs> and also, the weed whacker, the nose and ear hair trimmer, it's waterproof, folks. All these things are waterproof. Just turn a garden hose on them. It won't bother them. Uh, but the weed whacker uses a 9,000 RPM motor, a 360-degree rotary dual-blade system. So when you stick this thing up your nose, it'll whack the hair off. It, it's better than doing a whole eight ball of cocaine it'll eat the entire inside of your nose out and leave you sniffing fresh as a daisy did i cover everything yeah you covered cocaine and manscaped which i'm pretty sure wasn't in the copy okay well the cocaine does not come in the performance package 4.0 i must admit that it does you'll have to get that separately however if you want the weed whacker and the lawnmower and the Crop Preserver, and the Crop Reviver, and the Boxer Briefs, and the Travel Bag, then all you got to do is go to manscaped.com slash JCE, manscaped.com slash JCE. You're going to get 20% off your order and free shipping. They go above and beyond your nether regions. Manscaped.com, 20% off using the promo code slash JCE. Everyone's still looking to slash JCE. Yes, everybody is.